Thank you very much. Good evening. This story is called The First Christmas. The first Christmas I remember was in 1956 when I was six. I was standing outside our school looking up at this enormous Christmas tree which was covered in balloons and crepe paper decorations. I can see it in my mind's eye now as clearly as, as I can see you. I also remember exactly what I was wearing. I was wearing sandals and shorts and a t-shirt and a sun hat because it was very hot. I wasn't on my own. I was there with all the pupils of my school. We were standing there waiting for Santa to arrive. And we were arranged in our houses. There was Drake, there was Raleigh, there was Scott, and then there was the best house of them all, Shackleton. And we were there waiting for Santa to arrive. And we were watching our headmaster, Mr. Nicholson, because he was the one with the binoculars. Now this was in Malaya in 1956, where my dad was a soldier. Look, there he is, there's Santa, said Mr. Nicholson, and he pointed up to the sky and we all looked up and Yes, there he was. Far away in the distance, there was a small aircraft flying towards our school. And as I watched, it got bigger and bigger. And then I realised it, it, it was red. And when it got near our school, it tipped one wing and flew in a big circle round our school. And then Santa jumped out on a parachute. Above me, I could see Santa and I saw the parachute open like a big white flower in the sky Pfft. and we all cheered hurrah hurrah santa but the wind caught santa and took him away from the school far away from the school and as i watched santa fell into the jungle on his parachute equatorial forest we used to call it jungle in the old days we all groaned our presence had gone don't worry, children, said Mr. Nicholson. I'm sure Santa will, will find a way of, of, of getting back to the school. We just have to be patient. We know how to be patient, don't we, children? Yes, we did. Ten green bottles hanging, hanging on, on the wall. wall. Ten green bottles hanging on the wall. Come on, you bastards, join in. And if one <laughs> green, green bottle, bottle should accidentally fall, there'd be nine, nine green, green bottles, bottles hanging, hanging on, on the wall. wall. Nine green... Anyway, we went on. <laughs> we were just getting down to two green bottles. Then we heard Mr. Nicholson shout, there's Santa, there he is. He was pointing to the front of the school and there, the beginning of our school drive was Santa. He was sitting in the back of a Land Rover with the largest sack of presents you ever saw. And they'd made the Land Rover to look like a sledge and it was driven up and it parked right next to me and Santa jumped out and I could see that he was wearing big black shiny boots just like my dad. And he took the sack and he went to the base of the tree and he, and he called out the names. Now we'd sent our letters to Santa two weeks earlier. So we were all thinking, were we going to get what we'd asked for? And he called out the names. Peter Boyce. Peter Boyce ran up. Would he get what he'd asked for? He tore open the paper. Yes, he had. It was a self-muting tin whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Howie. Teresa Howie dashed up. Would she get what she wanted? She tore open the paper. Yes, it was a stethoscope. She said she'd always wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Richard York. Richard York went up. Would he get what he wanted? He tore open the paper. Yes. It was a Meccano kit make so that he could make his very own set of bagpipes. <laughs> Stephen Hobbs. I walked forward. Would I get what I wanted? I tore open the paper and, and, and yes, there it was. A John Bull printing set, number six. I could write the books, I could print it, I could sell it, I could do it on my own. Hurrah! 
Now Santa must have brought me loads of other presents because a couple of days later when it was Christmas, there was a big pile of presents for me. And we had Christmas dinner. We went down to the beach. We had roast turkey and we had pineapple and pawpaw and papaya, all of which we, we grew in our garden. It was lovely. The next Christmas I remember was 1958 when I was eight. By then my dad had won the war. So we had to leave Malaya and, mm. and go and live in a country called Blighty. We went on a big white ship called the SS Chusan for 30 sleeps. And at Blighty, we came to a place called Southampton. It was cold and wet and gray. We got on a train to go to my nanny and grampy Oswestry, where we were going to live the next couple of months. And Oswestry was cold and wet and gray. But my nanny remembered me from when I was this big from the ground. So I showed her my, my funny ear and, and my crushed finger and my two brothers and sister, which I also got in Malaya. <laughs> and Blighty was a funny country. It was cold. Everybody wore jumpers. Even the Christmas trees were inside the house. But the toilets were outside the house. <laughs> I didn't like this country. I wanted to go home. My uncle Mick took me down the bottom of the garden to, to show me all the rabbits. There were lots of hutches there and he let me say hello to the mummy and daddy rabbit who were called Mr and Mrs Churchill. And then in the evening we all went out to sing carols in a place called a church. Who lives here nanny? I said. Well Stephen, she said, I think it's the house of the Lord. He keeps it nice and tidy doesn't he nanny? Next day was Christmas Day, and it was cold and wet, and it was grey. Christmas dinner was roast rabbit and all the trimmings, and we then opened our presents. There was a huge pile of presents, so many presents I couldn't count them. So Santa must have known that I had left Malaya to go and live in Blighty. Thank you.